at the top of the stretch. The mile 37 and 4. 49er has the lead on the outside. Here comes Brian's time farther out. Evening Chris on the rail is seeking the gold. They're at the eighth pole. 49er leads clearly by two. Seeking the gold moves into second on the outside. Brian's time. Brian's time seeking the gold. Gaining ground on the outside of 49er. Loose three past 16th pole. It's seeking the gold and 49er to the wire. Seeking the gold and 49er. 49er on the inside. All right, so we're back uh, today on Monday on Racing Rundown. Uh, obviously, not the type of video we would have wanted to have been making today. We've had a lot of, a lot of unfortunate news come come down recently in horse racing. You know, obviously, we had we lost AP Indy earlier this year, and as you can tell by the title of this video, we're today talking about uh, one of the great long-lived horses that you know he, he's just lived forever. Uh, and you know, not not just the fact that he lived forever is remarkable. Just the fact that you know he was such a great racehorse on the track. Uh, as well as he he had some nice runners uh, in the breeding shed as well. So, uh, of course, we're talking about 49er today. Uh, winner of the 1988 Travers Eclipse Award champ champion for two-year-olds uh, in 1987. Uh, did not ever win a Breeders' Cup race. Uh, didn't compete in the 87 Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Definitely would have won that race uh, if he did compete in that race as a two-year-old. But, uh, you know, we're not going to talk about what he did and didn't do. What he didn't do, uh, more just, you know, remember 49er for the horse that he was and how great he was in so many aspects of life and horse racing. It, it, it was just incredible kind of, um, you know, I was talking to Jack about this before we, you know, started recording just the, the longevity of it all, obviously 35 years for any racehorse is impressive, but to do what he did both on the track and in the breeding shed, you know, siring some incredible uh, horses who um, also went on to be incredible sires and, you know, winning the races he did, uh, and to do it all in two countries, I might add, uh, you know, being a sire in, in the U.S. and in Japan, uh, just an incredible feat for him. And uh, just it's a shame we lost him, but I think it's also uh, very important that we celebrate what an incredible life he had at the same time. Yeah, because that is one thing. And, you know, we, we echoed, the, or I echoed this point with AP and he was, you know, it, AP and he, when he died, we had him for 31 years and we had 49er for 35 years. So. Uh, and, you know, 49er kind of carried the torch of that crop of three-year-olds that was born in 1985 were three-year-olds in 1988. Some long-lived, hardy horses from that crop. Uh, also want to mention Seeking the Gold, who lived to be 31, uh, died in 2016. Brian's time was up there. I believe he was 28. He died in 2013. Uh, winning Colors lived to be 20. Uh, Kind of average, but, uh, you know, for, uh, Risen Star, really the only one from that crop that any of the notable horses from that crop. Uh, that didn't uh, have that long of a life, but it was overall very hardy crop. A lot of great horses came out of that uh, that year when they were all three year olds, and you know, 49er was definitely one of the leaders of it. Uh, taking a look at what 49er did on the racetrack, uh, he won almost all the the big races for two year olds, uh, races that were big at that time in the 80s. Uh, that you could have possibly wanted him to win. With the except, he didn't win the Saratoga Special, but uh, he won the Sanford. He won the Belmont Futurity back when that was a grade one race. He won the Champagne. He won the Breeders' Futurity. As I mentioned in the beginning, he didn't run in the Breeders' Cup. But, uh, you know, even though he didn't run in the Breeders' Cup, it was still his resume was still enough to give him the champion two-year-old award. He would go on as a three-year-old, win the Fountain of Youth, uh, run second in the Florida Derby, run second in the Lexington, second in the Kentucky Derby. Uh, you know, we... We were talking about before this how, you know, had certain things in that race played out differently, he could have maybe won the Kentucky Derby. You know, I know a lot of people have questioned uh, over the years the ride that Pat Day had on 49er. We're not going to do that here. We're not going to break apart how whether or not he should have won a certain race or not. But it is worth mentioning that had things gone differently, he may have been able to win the Kentucky Derby. Same thing in the Preakness. You know, a lot of people, all the conspiracy theories out there about why he ran in the Preakness the way he did. Uh, you know, that's irrelevant right here, uh, but uh, it is worth mentioning that he that was the one race uh, after his two-year-old year where 49er did not run uh, up to the level where you would think he did. But he rebounded later in his three-year-old year. He won the Haskell. He won the Travers. He was second in the Woodward, which, you know, I tweeted this out earlier today over on Twitter that uh, of taking out all the races that he won, and, you know, this the race that he ran in the Woodward was better than, I would say, a lot of his wins probably with the exception of both the Travers and the Haskell, that the Woodward that he ran against Ali Sheba, who was a horse of the year that year, 
Uh, older horse, you know, the old adage is the very good older horse is always going to be the very good three-year-old. But the race that 49er put in to finish second by a head to Ali Shiva in the Woodward, and that was when the Woodward was running a mile and a quarter at Belmont. That was spectacular. Uh, he would win the Naira Mile, which is now the Cigar Mile, as uh, um, many of you probably know. And then he would go and he would run a respectable fourth in the Breeders' Cup Classic. Uh, shout out Julie Crone, our friend, rode him in that uh, Breeders' Cup Classic. And, you know, that was the conclusion to a great career. We didn't get to see him as a four-year-old. He probably would have been a really good four-year-old, but he would have had his hands full with uh, the two uh, three-year-olds that came along uh, in that year. But regardless of what, what we did get a 49er, there's a lot of stuff that we didn't get, but with what we did get, 49er gave us a lot. So, uh, you know, I'll let Eric talk a little bit about what 49er, a little bit more about what 49er did in the breeding shed. But, you know, ultimately on the racetrack, 49er, an Eclipse Award winner, great horse, won some big races, and was ran really well in a lot of other races that he didn't necessarily win. And you don't see too many horses like that nowadays that are able to have such longevity, I might add. Um, you know, 49er ran... Um, two, only at two and three, but what he was able to do in those two years at such a consistent level, quite impressive. In, in terms of the breeding shed, he was definitely uh, just as successful in the breeding shed as he was on the racetrack, if not even a little better. Uh, his best progeny would have been distorted humor for sure. Um, obviously a talented racehorse, but has proven to be a really good um, sire as well. Sired a uh, funny side very early on in his career. He went on to win the Kentucky Derby. Uh, and in 2002, he actually um, was, I, I believe it was 2002, early on in his career, about halfway through his career, he was sent off to Japan where he still had tons of success over there before being pensioned in 2007. Uh, and one of the lesser known things about 49er, but one of probably the coolest things is how well his offspring did as sires with two-year-olds. Um, the earnings were always near the top of the list, his son's on the freshman sire list, uh, one notably being Coronado's Quest, who was off to a really hot start as a sire. He never really sustained that success, but Coronado's Quest in himself was also a very talented racehorse. Uh, just, if anything, Coronado's Quest was just unlucky in the sense that he had to face a lot of really good horses throughout his career that prevented him from probably would have been 49ers best son on the track if he didn't run into so many great racehorses. Uh, but overall, uh, other than the fact he was a great sire and a great racehorse, um, he lived out a really long and uh, prosperous life, even after he was pensioned. 13 years on after um, being retired from stud duty, was he able to live a very healthy life. He was a beautiful racehorse up until the very end. So uh, just a very talented horse and a sturdy horse. His, his offspring have all proven to live pretty long lives themselves. One other of his his sons that I did want to mention is also Editor's Note, who didn't necessarily have the consistency of a lot of the other horses at 49er, uh, was able to sire, but uh, Editor's Note, it was a Belmont Stakes winner, uh, also won the Super Derby back when that was a big grade one race, so uh, as inconsistent as Editor's Note was, he was another one to add to the, the list of great horses that have come from 49er, and you know, just like Eric said, 49er was really the complete package, you know, he ran a lot. As a two-year-old, you don't see horses run at two as much as 49er did anymore. Uh, you know, he had a, he danced every dance. So with the exception of the Belmont Stakes, uh, as a three-year-old, uh, you, you could have, there wasn't much more, again, aside from running the Belmont Stakes, you couldn't really have expected him to do much more as a three-year-old. Uh, you know, having all those wins, having the Travers win, having the Haskell win, having the that second in the Woodward, as I mentioned, and then having his... His run, which wasn't as good as you as you maybe would have wanted him to have, but great run in the Breeders' Cup Classic nonetheless. And, you know, he, he did make a rival in Seeking the Gold, and those two ran some, you know, they ran th that rivalry. Uh, it was kind of a little mini rivalry compared to some of the other ones that we had, but uh, th those series of races where we got those two running against each other and the Haskell and the Travers, those are some of the best races to go back and revisit. Uh, I know I've been playing a couple of those in the background, but, uh, you know, that's really ultimately... The, the message to end with, you know, 49er, the complete package, a great racehorse, great sire, long lived, lots of longevity, lots of longevity, great looking horse. Uh, you, know, you know, there's not really anything you can look at 49er and say, uh, I, I don't like 49er for this uh, certain thing. Uh, maybe someday we'll see him in the Hall of Fame. Hopefully, I definitely think he's deserving of it. Uh, has not gotten in yet up to this point, but uh, historical review committee uh, do, does go back and look at this. So maybe someday we'll see 49er in the Hall of Fame. 
Uh, but regardless of that, great racehorse, sad to see him go. But again, he lived 35 years. There's really not much more you can ask uh, to have with a racehorse. Uh, you know, success he had on the track, success he had in the breeding shed, and the the long life that he was able to live. So sad to see 49er go, but it's really good that uh, 49er was able to live as long as he did and uh, do what he was able to do while he was here. So on a sad note, uh, 49er, unfortunately, no longer with us anymore, but uh, lots of great memories from him to look back at. And uh, hopefully next time we come here, we'll have a little bit more of a uh, cheery topic. But uh, thank you for stopping by. And uh, once again, 49er, one of my favorite horses. Uh, I'm sad that he's no longer here, but, uh, you know, like we said, we had him, so we can be happy about that. We'll see you next time. Joining them, Privan, it's four of them across the track. Now seeking the gold in front by a head. Along the inside, 49er. Private terms in the middle of the track and primal. And down the stretch they come. Head to head, stride for stride. 49er on the rail. Seeking the gold on the outside. 64 miles to go. Nose is apart. 49er and seeking the gold. Wow. A lot of finish. But I believe it was 49er by a nose with pinned Kai. And on the outside, seeking the gold was second. What a finish.